Hello and welcome. Today we'll be going over the V Rising dev update number 26, The Ruins of Mordium. All right, let's get started. So here in the very beginning of this dev update, we have wonderful uh, cover art here where we have Dracula himself. I love this. This actually looks really nice. Cool. Greetings, vampires. Today, we plunge into the cold, dark depths of the ruins of Mordium to explore our vampire history. With the return of the King of Kindred, it is perhaps time to remind ourselves of who we are and explore the new revelations of our people's legend. We are cracking open ancient tomes and telling old tales, then getting a taste of what is to come with the coming invasion that threatens the return of Dracula. Before we start, have you seen everything we have coming May 8th? If not, make sure you have a look. We've got everything coming in 1.0 in one place just for you, our beloved Nightkin. I actually covered that previously. And with that settled, let us enjoy a tale of clans, kings, curses, and utter calamity. This was ours. Long ago, the realms of humankind stood proud in the light a great civilization. In the long shadows of the mighty citadels of man, vampires ruled through well-placed ploys and manipulations. That was an age of diplomacy, with many clans playing their courts against one another in games of blood and clever trickery. Families of vampires fell in and out of power, trading places as easily as pieces on a chessboard. Then came Dracula, wielding new magic from a realm beyond, the Shadow Realm, the self-declared immortal king brought with him an era of domination and tyranny. Dracula was cunning and played his games well. His malevolence was unmatched. He demanded nothing less than total submission, something that did not sit well with the proud vampire courts of the day. In the following brutal civil war among vampire kind, unwavering loyalty bred servitude. Thus, his own army emerged, a militant cult known as the Legion of Noctum. Many clans attempted to resist his rule. Dracula, the Immortal King. Wow. So this looks like this might be his um, in-game page. Uh, so whenever there is a boss like in the game and you click on their profile in the V-Blood page, it usually brings up something like this, but with like text on this side kind of talking about it. I wonder why they omitted it here. Um, there might be information we don't know, so that's kind of interesting. Just wanted to point that out. The Path of the Warlord. Dracula was hungry for battle, and though still embroiled in conflict with the many factions of the night, he turned his attention to his next target. Confident in his power and filled with burning need to inflict his will on those below him, the Conqueror would march on anyone who would raise a hand against him. A violent campaign carved a path across Fardorn, vampire against vampire, with humans caught in the middle and driven to the brink of extinction. Fardorn torn asunder by warfare. Yes, we've seen this scene before. Um, in the original, I believe in the original trailer for this game, you can actually find this scene. Resourceful as they are, the humans tried everything they could to resist the vampire onslaught. They developed vampire hunting techniques, discovered various vampire anathemas, I hope I said that right, like silver and garlic, and even devised terrible biological experiments to find weapons against the nocturnal armies. Despite these small steps forward, nothing could stand against the might of the Legion of Noctum and Dracula's powerful shadow magic. The Price of Pride In desperation, humankind called out for help and was answered with the powers of the light. This new power was harnessed by those who gave themselves to this new mysterious force, and so the Church of Luminance was born. This shocking new power allowed mankind to push back against the vampires, driving into the heart of the invading forces, where they were able to strike down Dracula himself, a champion for the wretches. The resulting fallout of the once immortal king's fatal act devastated the world, leaving a scar that would last to this very day. One massive crystallized blood monument is believed to be his final resting place. The other is a legacy. It rained seven days and seven nights with cursed blood, massacring many exposed and permanently twisting and changing others. Dracula's Demise. Uh, well, actually, before I, I go on, I actually saw this, um, 
I think we've seen this picture before, like in the 1.0. Um, so yeah, if you need to read more about that, I guess you could also reference the 1.0 page. So I will also be leaving a link to that in the description. These changed creatures, human and beast alike, would unknowingly continue to carry on Dracula's evil will throughout the centuries, carrying his essence in their bloodlines and enhancing their abilities. This allowed them to pursue their heightened, unlocked potential. These creatures became the V-Bloods that inhabit Vardoran today. Often achieving positions of great importance due to their abilities and aspirational aims, these corrupted individuals even existed among the Church of Luminance themselves, heralding their strange power as further blessings of the light. Meanwhile, Dracula's defeat, while true, was a ploy of its own. A great strategist always has a contingency plan, and his reign of blood planted the seeds of his inevitable revenge. The Ruins of Mordium. The world of Vardoran is littered with ancient memories of vampire kind, forgotten symbols of their former greatness among the ruins of abandoned strongholds all throughout the world. None more so, however, than the cold wasteland to the east. Here's a forgotten castle heart. We've seen these before. Dracula's castle sits empty and decrepit in the depths of his ancestral home, Mordium. Far into the corrupted reaches, his forces flourished and built their civilization in this frozen land, protected from the sun by a sky grown overcast around his seat of power. Once a land adorned with towering black spires and monuments to the Night King, it has since been forsaken and forgotten, allowing Dracula's defeat and the banishment of vampires into hiding. Now inhospitable to most life, it remains a desolate, barren wasteland, untouched for centuries. Okay, so this is what they're talking about here, Ruins of Mordium. So, yeah, it looks like they kind of, uh, you know, showed up a little bit of a... Um, it looks like they're showing a little bit of a map here with the... Uh, I think this is just like a redrawn map. I don't think this is the map we're going to see in-game, probably, because this is a lot less detailed than what we currently have. Um, but I do find this really nice uh, to look at, I will say. Um, let's see if we can find anything interesting on the map here. So I'm just kind of looking around. Um, I don't see anything too crazy. Uh, I'm just kind of quickly looking around to see if there's anything that stands out to me here. Uh, I don't see anything. The only thing that kind of catches my eye is the fact that in the Ruins of Mordium, they have like little red tents. So I imagine this is probably some kind of like military battlefield kind of thing. It's going to be interesting to visit this place, I will say, because even just looking at some of the images from or actually even some of the footage from the Ruins of Mordium trailer. It looks great, honestly. <laughs> so I'm uh, definitely excited to see that. And it looks like we have like a little uh, little castle or something here. OK, so like for for now, like currently on the map, there's like this this place on the map where we can't access. It's like over here somewhere, I believe. So uh, this was what, you know, we thought was like Dracula's castle. So now I'm kind of wondering like, I don't see a castle here now, so I'm wondering if, like, maybe um, that's the place that uh, this image from up here... Oh, actually, let's go back. This image right here might be from, because it seems like that's what they're kind of alluding to here, as, as far as I can see. So we'll have to see when 1.0 comes out, but I, I just kind of wonder. Right now, we can actually live in, like, all these places. So seeing all these tents, I know there's people who want to who have already been saying they want to move to, like, this area, but... Uh, if this is a late game area, that's going to be really hard to set up early games. So I, <laughs> good luck, guys. That's all I'm going to say. Um, but yeah, I don't see anything else on the map that really stands out to me here. But I just thought it was interesting. But yeah, I really like this little map. It's kind of cool. The Frozen Reaches of the East. Hidden among cold peaks are the old relics of the world's greatest civilization. Fallen into disrepair as they slumbered. From the steps of Dracula's courtyard down to his great garden and off into the ruins of the sacrificial sites, battlements, towns, graveyards that pepper the landscape, the one mighty bastion of Vardorn's top predators now lay in frosted over shards of its former majesty. The frigid hills of Mordium lie in untouched ruins until only recently, where Dracula's servants have come to life once again. 
From his throne in the Shadow Realm, Dracula has been biding his time and now calls for his most dedicated acolytes to rise to a new challenge, the next step of his sinister plan, his return to Vardoran from the dark depths of another world. The Legion of Noctum. The dead silence of the cold night is broken by the thrum of ancient chanting, the hum of long forgotten prayers to a distant, horrid place scattering the resting quiet of the ruins of Mordium. The Legion of Noctum rises more like a scattered cult of fanatical servants than the endless armored armies they once were. I'm not going to go over this gameplay trailer because I already went over this. I'm going to put a link in the description to that video in case you guys want to reference that. Over time, the Legion has shifted its focus. Formerly conquerors of the battlefield, they now employ a different approach. The Legion has become practitioners of rituals as well as executioners gathering blood crystals and sacrificial offerings to open rift portals to the Shadow Realm. Through these portals, they summon terrifying monsters from beyond. Dracula's abominable new soldiers, the Draculin, are brought into the world to aid in collecting blood crystals and V-blood essence. Their goal is to bring Dracula back to the world of the living. Once that is complete, they will be unleashed across the rest of Dardoran to wreak havoc and reclaim the world in the Dark Dictator's name. So I think this creature here was the creature we've seen in a previous uh, update. I'm going to put their image up here on the screen. Uh, just looking at their head, I'm pretty sure that that's who that is. And oh my god, that is uh, terrifying. So, <laughs> bearing magic of shadow and blood. When you awaken, you are one such vampire that once stood against the tide of Dracula's forces, awakened by the thrum of his power, singing throughout the lands of Ardoran once more. It will be up to you to regain your power and make the so-called king of vampires pay the price of his hubris and carelessly calling you back into this fight. It's time to climb to the top of the nocturnal hierarchy, shattering old vampire legends and crafting your own legacy along the way. The Old Legends uh, just a quick side note I wanted to add here. I actually really like that they're kind of giving us a little bit of a fill-in when it comes to the uh, lore of the game, because as of right now, there's not really that much lore. Like, you can read, you know, the descriptions of, like, the V-Bloods in the game, but that doesn't really give you, like, a lot of, like, information, per se. Like, you get some information as far as, like, how each of the V-Bloods are kind of, like... um in relation to each other or if they have some kind of rivalry or something like that but uh yeah i think i think having a page like this that just kind of explains a little bit of the lore i think was really nice so i'm just gonna continue <laughs> just a side note not, nothing really uh that important but i i just felt like saying it the old legends Awoken from their slumber are key members of Dracula's surviving generals the most trusted and capable vampires from the days of the monarch's rule You'll find these new adversaries within the depths of Noctum, watching the roadways or overseeing the operations within the frozen waste to make certain the Lord's plan comes to fruition. There's also a place for one of Dracula's oldest and most fearsome soldiers. General Elena the Hollow. Ooh, okay. I think I, I, I actually really like um, her armor. Looks like she has kind of a blue thematic to her. I thought that, I don't know, maybe it's because I, you know, I've been like seeing all the magic from like images like this one, for example. I just kind of imagine all the generals kind of matching Dracula's color scheme, like because he has more of a, you know, he has like some red in there. So I thought maybe we'd see more of that, but it looks like that's not necessarily the case. She looks like she's uh, wearing blue here and it looks... It actually looks pretty good so interesting i wonder what this boss is going to uh have as far as like her skill set so that's cool elena was once a talented weaver a wife a mother and friend now she is none of those things when dracula's forces descended on her village and harvested its people she hid in the chaos and witnessed the horror firsthand discovered by the immortal king himself he saw an opportunity to twist a suffering creature to his whim he shaped her into an ice-cold killing machine, a perfect servant for the Legion of Noctum. 
General Cassius the Betrayer. Oh, wow. So he's wearing green. Are all the generals wearing different colors then? That's kind of interesting. So she she's wearing blue. I wonder where these bosses are going to be because as of right now, like, and I if I remember correctly in Styx's lore, he's supposed to be one of the generals, at least I think in the I don't know if he's still going to be because right now he's just kind of roaming the uh, cursed forest. So I'm not really sure what the plan is for him, but I guess they'll probably cover it in the like somewhere in um this uh blog post. At least I hope so. So um yeah, that's kind of uh it's kind of interesting. Once a highly skilled and respected officer within the ranks of the Church of Luminance, Cassius served as a powerful paladin who led a troop tasked with hunting down Dracula himself. His mission ended in failure, overpowered by the immortal king and forced into servitude. With the dark influence of his sentient blade, Nightfall Edge, affecting his mind. Oh god. Cassius now serves as a loyal general for the Legion of Noctum. Oh, wow. So hold on. So his blade is sentient? Wait a second. So I guess his blade is is controlling him? That's kind of interesting. It's kind of an interesting idea. I mean, I wonder where they're going to put these generals. I like, I don't know, because like when Gloomrock came out, we had a bunch of new bosses and um, they were kind of spread out throughout the map. So like... For example, like we got the old wanderer in the cursed forest, which wasn't there until Gloomrot. So I'm kind of wondering if they're going to spread out all of the generals on the map or if they're just going to have them in the ruins of Mordium. So I, I think that kind of has yet to be seen, but I don't know. It kind of makes you wonder. General Valencia the Depraved. Oh, OK. I think this is the boss that we saw in the trailer for for Ruins of Mordium, if I remember correctly. I think I uh, even pointed her out. I think she was my thumbnail. Uh, so yeah, I guess this is Valencia. Uh, I know that they showed this, I think, on Twitter. I think they posted about Valencia on Twitter. So I kind of, you know, at that point, then it was kind of like confirmed, like, okay, this is the V-Blood. This is the general. So yeah, I like her outfit. It's pretty cool. Red is my favorite color. So now, uh, oh, and yeah, she has her spear. So this is definitely that boss. The hairstyle, the the face, the, the body, the everything. Yeah, that's definitely her. Valencia was once a human baroness, part of an affluent noble family from before the Great War. Always hungry for power, ambitious, and utterly without moral tethers, she saw the rise of Dracula and his legions as an opportunity to surpass her human limitations and become something greater. Impressed with her utter depravity, Dracula granted the Baroness's wish. Valencia now serves as a vicious general of the Legion of Noctum. Lord Styx, the Night Champion. Okay, so they gave him the title Lord Styx. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. It doesn't look like they changed his uh, look at all, though. He looks pretty much the same from what I can remember. I don't see any differences in him, but yeah, let's continue. The legendary vampire from the Age of Dracula, who was reawakened by the call of the Immortal King, known for his ferocity on the battlefield against the forces of the church and rival vampire alike, he has more than earned his place as the knight champion of the Legion of Noctum. His presence at the heart of Dracula's demise suggests that operations there are of vital importance to Dracula's plans. His presence at the heart of Dracula's demise? See, now this is what confused me. This, this is what's confusing me. If he has a presence at the heart of demise, the heart of demise, as we know now, or the, that we, well, I guess we recently found out, is this area here. Which then further confuses me because where is that place? You know, like it makes me wonder, like, I don't know. I, I, I have I have many questions. OK, so if we look at this map here, right. Like I said before, this is the area of the map we have currently that I thought was probably going to be Dracula's castle. But this map doesn't show a castle here. So now I'm confused. And then we have here a castle. I think, you know what? I feel like I feel like the devs are just messing with us at this point, because I remember when um, we were waiting for Gloomrot to come out before they announced Gloomrot, people thought that the that this part of the map was going to be revealed first. And then they just said 
they were basically like psych and then they added like gloom rot and everyone's like what what's gloom rot you know like that kind of caught uh caught us by surprise you know it gave us kind of like a curveball um so i wonder if maybe they're they're just baiting us here and or maybe they're just gonna remove this part of them i don't know it's hard to tell because if you look at the structure of the land here it looks like that might be still present that area but i wonder if this is where he he was demised and then maybe this is the castle that he's at now because remember we've seen uh images of the castle and, and the images of the castle are all in like a wintry snow-like area so it has to be in the ruins of mordium um i doubt that the elevation of this area is going to be high enough to, in order to have like you know kind of like an icy mountain area i don't know it kind of makes me wonder um so i don't know I, this is this is something this is a little bit of a uh curveball here i would say so we gotta keep an eye out for that come 1.0 wretched rituals keep in the wallowing cold of the ruins of mortium the legion of noctum is making moves with the resources they've stockpiled from their excavations in the heart of dunley farmlands with the use of morbid blood tainted rituals they call forth draculan legions to further their plans each soldier another hand to assist in getting them to the ultimate goal of bringing their dark lord into being looks like we have a summoning circle going on here it looks kind of interesting um you see like three crazy cultists it looks like probably or worshipers of some kind uh and unhindered they will oh man that's not good by crafting the eye of mortium you will gain insight into the cosmic disturbances as the legion enacts them which will allow a clever vampire to capitalize on its otherworldly intrusion to steal rare valuables cutting your way through these rituals lets you carve out remnants of the shadow realm stygian shards which will be the reward for unraveling these rift incursions oh oh okay so this is kind of this is this is just like the uh i believe right now we have something that kind of looks like this it's called the eye of twilight if i remember correctly and the eye of twilight is used to find like the location of the shards so you know how we have the um the shards for the big three so you have uh the one for adam you have the one for uh behemoth and another one for the uh winged horror so i kind of wonder what this one is going to show us specifically also uh something i want to point out if we look at the walls here what is this uh this looks like a brand new wall decoration maybe is this like a new curtain or something because i don't think i've seen this before i mean unless this is this is something that they've shown but they like but maybe i haven't noticed before but this looks new i haven't i don't recognize this um the wallpaper looks like the um the black stone like so we have like i think four different default uh castle walls right now we have the the traditional gray one we have the lighter gray one we have the white marbly looking one and then we have a black one and i think this right here is the black one actually i recognize that wallpaper oh uh looks like we have some new torches here that's interesting okay yeah these are new i don't i don't think we have yeah we don't have these in the game right now these uh torches so huh i was not expecting like a, a, a furniture reveal here or not furniture but a decoration reveal here but uh yeah i'll take it all right the eye of mortium yeah this, oh so that yeah that's what it is okay cool kind of obvious when there's a big eye but you know <laughs> Rift incursions come in a lesser and greater variety. When you first enter the ruins of Mordium, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with General Cassius and General Elena. You'll be at just around the right power to begin disrupting the lesser rift incursions. The shards you gather from these will allow you to purchase shattered artifacts from local vampire traders, as well as tap into them to unlock spell crafting secrets and gain powerful passive magic effects that enhance your abilities. Okay, and then this is the, uh, I think this is going to be the Stygian altar. They've shown this before. Oh, these shelves are new. Oh, wow. Wow, they're just teasing a bunch of like furniture items here. Yeah, so these shelves don't exist in the game right now. That's actually really cool. And they look, 
similar, but they have different items in them. I wonder if this is going to be a modular thing. I wonder if they're just demonstrating like a modular thing here or if these are just separate kinds of shelves that look the same. But uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting. These lamps are uh, not currently in the game either. Kind of looks like there's a candle in here, but it's hard to tell from the image because of the angle. But yeah, we don't currently have that. And this right here, I don't know if this is going to be part of the altar or if this is like a separate like, you know what? I think that's going to be part, part of the altar. If I had to guess, the altar is probably going to have um, it might come with this. I'm not sure. Because if we look at the the angle of it, this is definitely... So this is definitely, uh, once again, kind of disproves the theory of, like, diagonal walls. Because if we look here, this this wall here in the corner, and then it looks like they just squished this thing in the corner. So it looks like this thing just has an odd shape to it. Um, yeah, but that's kind of interesting. I was not expecting to see some new shelves up in here, so that's kind of cool. Unlock hidden power. Much later on, when you're nearly at the height of your power, you'll be ready to take on the higher level of rifts. The greater Stygian shards you gain can be used to unlock your final steps of magical mastery. Or if you feel like bartering, it can also be used to buy off powerful artifacts from a particularly affluent vampire trader. Getting an artifact in this way can be a bit of a gamble, but it may even net you something invaluable, like one of the new specialty legendary weapons with unique effects. Ooh, okay. Challenging the Legion of Noctum and Rift Slaying in the final step of your ascension towards striking into the Shadow Realm itself, where you will finally be able to challenge Dracula himself. Yeah, we've seen this in the trailer um, for the Ruins of Mortium. So again, check out uh, check out the link below in the description if you want to see my uh, breakdown of that trailer. Plunge into the rift, it says here. The Immortal King awaits. Are you ready, vampires? May 8th is fast approaching and the excitement is ramping up. Bloodthirst permeates the air and hungry vampires are waking up from their slumber ready for more. Well, here it comes. To keep up with everything going on with the launch of V Rising, keep an eye on our socials. There's a lot of information coming out, so this is your best chance to keep up. V Rising Early Access is available now on Steam. The PS5 release of V Rising is set for later this year. God damn it. Please tell us the date. <laughs> uh, I was hoping they would tell us maybe, but that's not what this article is about, I guess, so I can't be that surprised. Or not article, this blog, I meant. Uh, lots of love and a pint of blood, the marketing team. So, uh, yeah, I, I think I know this is going to sound silly, but for me, like the, the highlights of this blog was just seeing new furniture items and just kind of like, I don't know, like I wasn't expecting that. Like, I thought maybe they were just going to go over lore and and just that's all they were talking about. And that kind of was the case here. But wow, I, I think the more noteworthy things to kind of look at is um. Well, we see that the generals are all wearing like different colors. Uh, Styx does not look like any of these generals, uh, which is kind of interesting. So I wonder if they're going to like rewrite his lore a little bit or if, you know, there's something else. I actually something I thought they would mention here that they didn't mention at all was the winged horror. Because uh, from what I remember, the winged horror is like Dracula's pet before he like died. <laughs> So I thought they were going to have something here about that, but I don't see anything uh, that they talked about. So it looks like they just focused on the um, power structure aspects of this whole situation. It looks like there's a little bit of politics involved, a little bit of uh, chicanery behind the scenes. And uh, yeah, I mean, just seeing a lot of this is, has been actually really cool. I, I, But yeah, again, what kind of confuses me a lot about this is sticks. So... If we go back to his little blurb here, the fact that it says his presence at the heart of Dracula's demise, I like it kind of makes me wonder, like, am I like, are they? I don't know. Like, I kind of wonder what they're going to do with Sticks because right now he's in the cursed forest. Um, as far as well, the ruins of Mortium are here. I doubt the humans would have been able to even penetrate this area here. So it kind of makes me wonder, like, I don't know. And then, of course, this here is what we thought was going to be Dracula's castle. But now I don't think so, because there's no castle here, but there's a castle here. And I think it would make more sense for Dracula's castle to be here than here. 
uh, based on current events. I don't know. So I wonder if maybe we're, I'm just like wrong entirely. And maybe there's a place in the cursed forest that they're now going to, um, kind of bring up and maybe like, I don't know. I kind of wonder how the cursed forest, you know, became the cursed forest. And I wonder if it's just a bunch of like stragglers from the ruins of Mordium at this point. Um, I don't know. I'm probably wrong on the lore. I'm going to have to do a little bit more digging, but, uh, I, I probably will do a lore video going over all of the stuff here for um, the game, but I'm probably going to wait until after 1.0 comes out. That way I can at least, uh, you know, read all the descriptions anew and see the new ones because we still haven't seen uh, all of the descriptions for like, uh, I think any of the generals maybe I, i'm not sure about valencia though because i think on the twitter page actually let me check on twitter i think they posted something about valencia on twitter oh this is new i didn't see this so it looks like they uh are showing off his character model here that's interesting oh that's a high it's a high poly model okay huh all right. And of course, you know, we've seen this. This is something they posted also on uh, their Twitter page. But OK, here we go. So Valencia. OK, they didn't tell us any more new information. It looks like they just kind of copy pasted what we got here today. So I don't I don't know. Um, I, I'm really curious to see what the lore is going to look like, how it'll change with uh, the addition of Dracula and his Legion of Noctum. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. What do you guys think these bosses are going to be doing? Cause like, I feel like there's always like little hidden things into the, um, in, into the lore and also things into like these blogs. I feel like there's like always like little Easter eggs and things that like kind of go over my head because at the time we just don't know. Um, but yeah, this is pretty exciting. What do you guys think of this update? Uh, does this you know, bring anything to light? Did you see anything interesting? Did I miss something that maybe you guys noticed? For those of you who don't know, my name is Shello Q. I'm a Shello Eats Quintly Reaper and Guide to the Underworld. I stream usually three times a week on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Today, I'm going to be streaming at 4 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so feel free to stop in and say hello. I'm going to be trying to finish up uh, my final castle before the 1.0 launch, so feel free to stop by, say hello, hang out, and chill, and yeah, uh, I will see you all next time. And as always, Sholo out.